Welcome to this Smith & Nephew Digital Education module on acute wounds. This forms part of a series of modules you can access to develop your knowledge and understanding around wound care. My name is Kate, Complex Wound Specialist at Smith & Nephew. Today we will be discussing acute wounds. By the end of the module you will be able to define an acute wound and discuss normal wound healing. Wound healing represents a dynamic, highly organised series of events. The process starts with hemostasis, progresses through a destructive inflammatory phase and then a restorative proliferative phase. It finishes with remodelling of the wound area. The normal process can be interrupted at any stage and is vulnerable to a variety of intrinsic and extrinsic inhibitory factors. The ultimate goal of wound management is to minimise the risk of opportunistic infection whilst promoting the development of healthy granulation tissue. Acute wounds are wounds that repair themselves following a timely and orderly healing pathway. This results in both functional and anatomical restoration. The time course of healing usually ranges from 5 to 10 days or within 30 days. There are differences between tissues in terms of the time required to complete regeneration. Wound healing time can be diverse and some wounds may take up to a year or more to heal completely. A completely healed wound is defined as one that has returned to a normal anatomical structure, function and appearance of the tissue within a reasonable period of time. Most wounds are usually the result of simple injuries, however some wounds do not heal in a timely and orderly manner. Acute wounds can be acquired as a result of traumatic loss of tissue or a surgical procedure. Wounds can arise from pathological processes that begin in externally or internally within the involved organ. They can have an accidental or an intentional etiology or they can be the result of a disease process. Acute wounds can be defined in two categories, either traumatic or iatrogenic. Traumatic are unintentional wounds, with some examples being abrasions, skin tears and burns. Medical intervention will sometimes result in acute wounds and these are known as iatrogenic wounds. Examples of these are skin grafts, IV puncture sites. Acute wounds begin with an injury that disrupts the blood supply, followed by blood clotting, which stimulates the release of growth factors that initiate the wound healing cascade. The behaviour of the cells that play a vital role in wound healing is determined by the current state of the wound. This slide gives an overview of the ratios of the different cells and how they apply to acute and chronic wounds. Fibrobraths are often premature and chronic wounds which disrupts their normal functioning. The main difference though between acute and chronic wounds is the rate of healing. The time to chronic wound healing is significantly delayed, going on in some cases to become larger due to the high level of proteases. Healing by primary and secondary intention. Primary intention. The wound edges have been closed using sutures, staples, wound adhesive or paper adhesive strips. For example, clean acute surgical wounds. Secondary intention, wounds are left open to heal. This is usually done by dressings. For example, abscesses, pylonidal sinuses. Pre-surgery assessment is crucial to ensure that acute incisions go on to heal without the risk of dehiscence. A number of factors need to be considered and include procedure type, whether the surgery is elective or in an emergency, how acute or ill the patient is prior to surgery, how clean the surgery is, is there an adequate blood supply and what is the patient's nutritional status. You can see in the picture that this wound has gone on to dehisce, causing a multitude of problems both clinically and for the patient. This wound is now complex and needs a full assessment along with appropriate treatment. A good option for this wound would be negative pressure wound therapy once the wound has been debrided. A skin tear is a traumatic wound caused by mechanical forces including removal of adhesives. Severity may vary by depth, not extending through the subcutaneous layer. 
Skin tears are a significant problem for patients and clinicians who treat them. They can be painful wounds affecting quality of life and causing distress to the patient. Skin tears may increase the likelihood of hospitalisation and prolong hospitalisation time. Risk factors include skin, extremes of age, so dry or fragile skin and previous skin tears, mobility, history of falls, impaired mobility, dependence on assistance for activities of daily living and mechanical trauma, general health, comorbidities, polypharmacy, impaired cognition, sensory, visionary and auditory and also malnutrition. Wound care management is a crucial component for skin tears. Following a full assessment, the wound should be cleansed with the skin flap realigned where possible. A trauma-free dressing should be applied for up to seven days where possible. Always remove the dressing going away from the skin tear to prevent further trauma. To check your knowledge and understanding, try and answer the quiz questions. You have now completed this module. Take the time to reflect on how you would take some of what you have learnt and apply it to your daily practice. If you are on the NMC register, please click the link shown to access a copy of the revalidation form. Simply put the title of the session on the form and file into your portfolio. Thank you for your time today. Please remember to look at other sections to access other modules to help you on your learning journey.